Welcome back. In this video, we will talk about all the important notes that you need to know about antihistamines. We have two main histamine receptors that antihistamine can block. These are histamine 1 receptor and histamine 2 receptors. We again subdivided the anti-H1 receptor to two groups. So we have the first generation and second generation. And these are the anti-H2 receptors. Remember these medications, it's very important. First generation anti-H1 receptor work by inhibiting, well, H1 receptors, as well as alpha receptors and muscarinic receptors. While second generation only block H1 receptors. An easy way to remember it is that first generation have longer names like diphenhydramine, and that's why they have more receptors to cover. H2 receptors are present in the parietal cells in the stomach, and once stimulated, they will secrete acid secretion in the stomach. Once we know the mechanism of action very well, the indication and side effects become very obvious. So first generation and second generation block H1, so they were used for allergy because allergy is histamine mediated. First generation also block the muscarinic receptor, so they can be used for motion sickness. And they are sedative because they can cross the blood brain barrier. And they can also be used as an appetite stimulant because they have peripheral anti serotogenic actions. Anti H2 receptors work in the stomach to decrease acid secretions, so they're used for peptic ulcers, gastritis, etc. For side effects, first generation can block the muscarinic receptor. So look for anti-muscarinic symptoms like dry mouth, urine retention, blurry vision, etc. They can also block the alpha receptor, so look for postural hypertension. And to remember the symptoms of anti-H2 receptors, I remember the word clear. C for cytochrome P450 inhibition, which is exclusive for cimetidine. L for lipophilic, so it can cross the blood-brain barrier and the placenta. E for eating, because it's used for peptic ulcer and gastritis. A for anti-androgenic effects, so it can cause gynecomastia and decreased libido. And R for renal toxicity. And here's a small quiz. So which of the following medications can also be used for motion sickness? And here is the answer. Alright guys, that's all I have. I know this is a little bit long, but I tried to cover all the histamines all together so you can compare them and hopefully memorize them better. 